Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today, all on the same day, yes, if you're watching them at the start, I am taking a look at the uh, three top flight boards from the main three manufacturers. So I have the Godlike in this review that we're doing today, but you'll also see in the graphs for the uh, Maximus Extreme and the Aorus Extreme as well. And the full dedicated reviews for those are on the channel as well. The Asus one is the CPU review, by the way, because that was the one that I used first. Uh, with the Meg, I have done a full preview previously as well, which I will link to below, where I go into all the detail around the board, all the ins and outs, giving you a lot more information on the VRMs and stuff. But we're going to focus on performance today so that I can get the video done a little bit quicker and so that I can get them done for NDA. <laughs> So yes, uh, the board is out here because I finished testing for it a few days ago because I obviously had to move on to doing the other boards like the Aorus and stuff like that. And I have done a few bits and bobs with it. We've, um, uh, I've done lots of VRM stuff so that you can have a look. In fact, I will just pop the VRM graph up. Sadly, the um, Godlike was the warmest of the three boards that I have tested so far. The stock would have been literally with the MSI auto settings out of the box and then the overclock was with a 5.2 gigahertz all core at 1.3 volts. With the MSI, I did notice the um, load line calibration on it did notch the voltage up a little bit. It went from 1.3 volts in the BIOS up to 1.308, up to 1.31-ish in uh, Windows. Not too much of a problem though. One of the things I will say though, was the CPU temps on this board did actually seem marginally better than the ones that I'd experienced with the Asus, despite the voltage differences. Obviously there are other voltages that um, come into contention on the boards, but with minimal uh, intervention, the MSI was a little bit cooler, which was a nice kind of touch. Now, as I have said, there is a full rundown on everything that's on the board around the back, like highlights would be the 16-phase uh, VRMs on this one, and it's 90-amp VRMs as well. But the other things like 2.5 gig Intel Ethernet, but they've also got a 10G Aquantia Ethernet on the back as well. Um, and then it does come with this little add-in card in the box, and it has two NVMe slots in it. Now, I did get a bit excited about the possibility of this in that if I put one NVMe in rather than two, that it would then get to use eight lanes, but it sadly didn't work that way because on the bottom of the card, it's wired to eight PCI Express lanes. I'm not even going to cut. So it's wired to eight PCI Express lanes, you can see here. Um, and I was kind of hoping that if you only use one, it would let you use all eight. Now, it, I know that's uh, very kind of like wishful thinking, but it was just in case we might be able to get higher than PCI Express 3 speeds. Because I did test with a um, PCI Express 4 Viper NVMe drive and it just come out of 3500, which is max PCI Express 3 kind of like capabilities. So I did give it a go. It didn't um, flourish, but that's going to be the same with all of the uh, Z490 boards until we get new CPUs, if whenever uh, there is no PCI Express 4. So it doesn't matter if the board is built for it, the CPU is the limiting factor, exactly the same as it was with AMD. Now, the MSI did actually do very well at stock and overclocked. And there were several times that the board was uh, topping the graphs. Um, and I know it's the most expensive, it's the most expensive MSI board that they do, so you'd kind of be expecting them to be doing really well. But it was fairly consistently, and it's an early launch. Obviously, I had this before the processors were released to the public. So I think MSI actually deserved quite a uh, pat on the back. Also, there were a lot of BIOS revisions before launch to help negate some of the issues that we were getting with the uh, stock boosting. They did that. Again, it made a significant difference in the tests, and, and you'll see uh, in the graphs that they were all doing really well. 
So <clears throat> although this is a very quick review and that's just because of like running out of time and having to redo benchmarks and that sort of thing, it did do very well. The only thing that um, uh, I didn't particularly like on the board is the little screen up here and I found it a bit dark and it's like it's got a tinted lens over the top and I think it was a bit too tinted. Um, in that when you're looking in the b-roll and it looks okay there but the moment that you've got it in a case behind another window it gets too kind of dark and it needed a little bit more vibrancy either that tint needed to be lighter or they needed to turn the brightness up a little bit just to be able to make it full th pull through um, other than that i think it's a very good looking board very grown up looking board uh, and it's been fairly well designed as well it also like i said the performance is very good now i i've done the three most expensive boards early on purpose uh, but I, I have got a selection of other boards so over in time the graphs are going to mature um, and I know a lot of people are going to be kind of saying well, why are you reviewing Z490 stuff well you know I'm a reviewer I'm going to help you guys choose between the options if you want to buy into Z490 not that I'm telling you you should or you shouldn't but you know there are going to be a lot of other boards that we are going to get done so yes this has been a very quick godlike review but overclocked really well, it matched the others, did very well in the graphs. Uh, the only negative point was the VRMs were a little bit warmer than the others, but when you consider that you had 10 cores running at 5.2 gigahertz and the VRM still stayed below 70 degrees, I think that's still a pretty big win. The boards, if anything, are over-specced because they're just, you, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think that they needed all these VRMs. So it's really nice that they're there, but it obviously drives the price up a bit as well. So I'm now looking forward now, seeing these, go back and look at the other ones. So yes, I do apologise. It's a very swift review by my kind of standards, but it looks great, performed really well. And if I was to say anything about my experience of working with all the boards at launch, this was the one that gave me the least amount of uh, headaches and uh, MSI as a whole and their development team and everyone that kind of keeps in contact, they were working overtime throughout the launch. And I'd actually like to say a personal thank you because they made my life so much easier than having to bang my head against the wall with some of the other brands. So yeah, props to MSI, cracking board. Yes, they are really expensive. Uh, but I think it's because they've been, uh, they are, literally this one is kind of just it's they've made a motherboard which is the best that they can possibly do so sure it's not going to be cheap they're looking at coming in around the 750 pound mark but if you want the best that they can do that's how much it's going to cost if you need to base it more on a budget then there are a lot of other options like the unify and the carbon for example which i will be reviewing soon anyway props to msi